The time right now is 729. The attempted assassination of former President Trump coming just two days before the beginning of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, which kicks off today. That's right. So what impact could this weekend's events have on the GOP and the presidential race, really, for those answers we're turning now? to Republican political strategist Chapin Face. Well, Chapin, good morning to you. Good Thanks morning. for being here. There is a lot Thanks to talk having. about. And, and let's begin, really, Chapin, with the, the tone and the tenor uh, of the convention, really, right? Obviously, this attempt on the former president's life is going to change how we look at this convention. How do you see it playing out? Well, I think it will change the tone and tenor, as you said. Um, I think uh, people will be a little bit more reserved on uh, some of the heated rhetoric. But mm -hmm. I do think, at the same time, it's going to be all about what just happened. Mm. Um, I think all of the speeches will mention it. I think it will be hanging over. Um, and Republicans, by the way, I think, you know, um, you know <laughs> their, their thoughts are that this is going to solidify his win, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a, a weird juxtaposition where this is such a serious thing that happened and everyone is taking it seriously. But at the same time, I think you're going to see a, a, a generally positive atmosphere and like a convention usually is, yeah. right? He's going he's to unveil his vice president and the political process will go on. But I think it'll be a, a huge part of it. It'll be contrast. I think um, if they're smart, they'll highlight um, or at least pay a, a lot of tribute to the firefighter that was killed, yes. you know, protecting his family. I think um, it would be smart of the Republican convention folks and the president to sort of make it more about that and sort of the, the political climate than about, you know, Donald Trump himself. Certainly he'll do that uh, yeah. a little bit because we, we know him now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it is also a, a hard needle to thread, I think, or a little needle to thread for them. It is a difficult moment in American of politics course. right now, right? I mean, that uh, goes yeah. without saying almost. Um, so how do you have a convention uh, and do all the rah-rah at the same time? I think you just have to be a little careful about what you're saying and how you're saying it. Yeah. Um, I think some of the more standard politicians that are going to be up there will certainly know how to how to do that balancing act. Right. And some of the newer, or even Trump himself, who mm -hmm. sometimes goes off, a lot of times goes off script, you know, would, we'll all have to stay tuned to see how he handles it. Yeah, I mean, even President Biden addressed the nation yep. yesterday, asking Americans to take down or to, to take it down a notch, yep. all this heated rhetoric. Obviously, the nation needs that, but yes. do you think that that will actually happen? You know, it's interesting. I mean, I, I think a lot, I think there will be a lot of people trying to do that, but I think a lot of people are even more angry and fired up now. Mm -hmm. I mean, their candidates, uh, you know, it was an attempt on his life very publicly mm -hmm. and, and brazenly, and I think there are going to be a lot of people who are upset about it. Um, so I think it's going to be difficult. Even if they want to, and that's the strategy, or, you know, let's keep the temperature down, there will certainly be there people there who are angry, right? Everyday people who are angry, and the delegates will be will be upset. Well, there's this call from the, from President Biden, right, when he addressed the nation from the Oval Office talking about unity. Mm -hmm. um, so do you see this as a unifying moment for both parties, right? Because the rhetoric in the country has been so heated and so high, do you think that the convention on both parts, when the Democrats have their convention as well, is a time to throw out the rhetoric, throw out the blame, because there has been some blame now, the Republicans saying the Democrats are to blame for this attempted assassination, and unify? Do you think it'll play out? I have low confidence that that's how, when we get through all the conventions, <laughs> yeah. that's where we're going to be. I have low confidence just based on the past few years, maybe even a decade of, of politics in America. However, I think they're going to try. And again, that's, that's what we are striving for here. But again, you know, we're trying to take down the temperature. Think about what's happening, right? We're trying to take down the temperature to a point where normally, even in a non, you know, uh, as, not as hyper-partisan uh, and rancorous election is still the attack the other guy. But it could be as simple as the, as, as the former president spoke to the New York Post and he said he spoke to President Biden and that it was, he could have said whatever he wanted to say, it was a lovely call, yep. short and lovely. Do you think you'll see that play out at the convention in terms of the president possibly saying, look, I spoke to the president and, and it could be a positive? I think so. I think he will certainly say that. I think Donald Trump is uh, someone who will talk candidly about phone calls just like that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think he will say that. And I, listen, you know, this is also an opportunity, right? There are people who don't like the rhetoric on either side, and there are certainly Republicans who don't like the rhetoric from uh, the Trump campaign. And this is a moment to bring sort of everyone together. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, as a strategist, that's what I would be recommending, right? Uh, yeah. You know, obviously we have to do the right thing here, but real politic, right? Let's see if we can bring everyone together. There are people who are unsure, mm -hmm. and let's, you know, make it about unity and see if we can get those people back in the tent. But do you think there would ever be any chance that the two of them would do something together mm. to speak to the nation? 
I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have a lot of calculations on both sides. Um, you know, I, I was sort of surprised uh, President Biden agreed to do that debate so early mm -hmm. uh, just because he's the incumbent and mm -hmm. it seemed to be a referendum on Trump. And as an advisor, I would say there's nothing, you know, debates are only there to make you know, for you to make mistakes, mm -hmm. right? So if you're far away and ahead yeah. and you can deal with the media and voter blowback of not even doing the debate, then, you know, that's something mm -hmm. to consider. Um, but I don't, you know, so does it get them, you know, how, does it help them? That's what their, mm -hmm. you know, political advisors are going to be asking. Does it get them? What does it get them? Yeah. And how does it benefit them? Will it benefit the country? Sure. But they're both running against each other. It's very difficult to bring them together. Yeah. I, again, I would have, lo I would love to see that. I, yes. I have low confidence uh, that after uh, we're through the both convention process, um, I think we're probably going to see a little bit creeping back up to where we were. Maybe not the same. Hopefully not the same. Yeah. But I do think as we get close, every day closer to Election Day, it's yeah. harder to ramp down the rhetoric. Let's talk about the the other news that's happening at the convention. That is the big, besides the former president accepting the nomination, that is the pick for the vice president, right? So all eyes have been because of uh, former President Trump's son saying J.D. Vance on his social media. Are you hearing J.D. Vance? And what do you think of the vice presidential pick? He is uh, certainly uh, the talk of the town right now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Thirty-nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're in New York, but I guess the DC, the talk of the town, is a, is a weird yeah. thing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, I, with Trump, sort of the conventional. You, you have to take the conventional wisdom and the way things usually are done, and sort of add a new ingredient to the recipes, right? Mm -hmm. so you don't throw it out completely, right? You still have to look at geography. Do they come from a politically important state? Do they have their own built-in following and constituents? and the policy and issues profile, all that stuff. But you also have to have someone who can work with Trump, who can deal with uh, Trump, and who can, Trump can deal with uh, personality-wise, right? You don't really want to, he's not going to take anyone who's going to steal the show, I don't think. Um, it has to be someone who is going to, you know, serve the president's purpose. And we have seen he's a little bit mercurial, and I mm -hmm. think there could be a, a surprise. Freshman. It's young. Uh, yeah, he is very young. Uh, I think that would be uh, an another thing, since we're talking about both candidates' ages, right. that would be something yeah. that would offset that. Um, you know, and I think, I think, you know, when you compare it to past uh, years, I think there's a lot of talented Republicans waiting, you know, in the wings. There's sort of a bench now since Trump has been uh, the mantle carrier for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. I do think, like, including Senator Vance and Senator yeah. Tim Scott and Nikki Haley, though, I, I don't know that she's going to be the one because, because of the primaries. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are all very talented politicians who have a future. Um, so I, I'm actually excited and uplifted for that and to yeah. see who Trump picks. And you also have to remember, he's picking his, you know, successor, mantle carrier, head of the party moving forward. So, you know, I don't know that President Trump thinks a lot about that, but certainly mm -hmm. the people around him of are course. thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Well, the wait is almost over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Chief and Faye, thanks so much for taking the time to come in and speak with us this morning. Of course. Thanks for having me.